I'm an historian, an infiltrated octogon. In this video, I will transmit to you all who exactly is America's, England's, Australia's and Canada's enemy, what his name is and from where they rule. So I would recommend both politically left-wing and right-wing minded people to watch this film through, through to the very end. Because here, I will reveal your mutual enemy you both have in common. My first video, The Pharaoh Show, I made 10 years ago in 2007, publishing it three years later in 2010. This here is my English version of my French film, La Bête Suisse, Base du Diable. In German, Das Schweizer Beast, Basis Lager des Teufels already seen by hundreds of thousands. My name is Sean Ross from South Africa and I'd like to drop a complaint at the state's attorney of any state against the Swiss state and the entire Swiss people for the financing and organization of World War II, for the responsibility for the genocides on the Jews, the Gypsies and the Russians and ordered by the Octagon Secret Society from Switzerland. A complaint for the hidden and camouflaged anti-Semitism of the Swiss state, complaint for the financing of the terrorist attacks in America, London, Canada and Australia, all of them ordered by the Swiss al taqwa Bank. And a complaint against the Swiss state for financing and organizing the left-wing terrorism in Germany by the Rote Armee Fraktion, the RAF, and Baden Meinhof group attacking US Army barracks, US institutions in Germany, and even US discos, leaving many US citizens dead, all from behind the screens organized by the Swiss Octogon and their sleeper agent Erich Honecker, the head of the German Stasi who came from the Swiss Palatines or Swiss Tsar in Germany. It is known now uh, and how the Swiss and the Stasi trained, uh, financed and furnished weapons to the German left-wing terrorists in order to attack US and Israeli targets, all orchestrated from the motherland in the Alps. And I'd like to be taken in any state's protection program because my life and those of my family and our three children are in serious acute danger because of the numerous murder threats by the Swiss Nazis, the same powerful Swiss organization that already financed Adolf Hitler by the Swiss general and octagon member Ulrich Wille and organized the Islamofascism after the war by Swiss octagon's great eminences François Junot and Hans Ahmed Huber al Swissri. It's a long story and I'd need a safe place to write it all down for you in detail with names and dates. This, what I've already started on my YouTube channels Gure and Chatsafrats and for which the Swiss Nazis kidnapped me on July the 16th, 2015, against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs, because of my YouTube videos, in which I've tried to warn the US, Britain, Canada and Australia for coming terrorist attacks, and in which the Swiss were very successful to silence me up through the rept, a time in which I was heavily tortured through code O2T oxygen deprivation in several Swiss torture detention centers for political prisoners. In the internet you can read about it in the Zurich files as you can see here and about the torture on political prisoners in Switzerland by oxygen deprivation. It's very clean, you know, it's very Swiss, there are no proofs, it's neutral no blood. I'd need your help to make those complaints in a court of law in any state. You can contact me on my email address in the description. And now the story. I was there years ago when Swiss industrials discussed the US future and those of Britain, Canada and Australia. 
when Swiss Octogon of the Nazi Templars and sole victor of the Second World War decided false flag terrorist attacks in Paris, London and Berlin, where Paris is still called per Isis, per Isis, by its members, meaning the House of Isis, like in a royal house or royal lineage of the wid widow. And several times I tried to warn British and US authorities for the Swiss danger by letters, emails, by means of videos and three official complaints in several French courthouses. On February 11, 2014, Bologne sur Mer, March 24, 2014, in Mende, and April 25, 2016, Saint Etienne. And in 2009, the US Embassy in Bern, Switzerland, even called the Swiss Nazi police to have me arrested. Pope with the butt of a machine pistol in my stomach, spending hours in a Swiss police station afterwards. Now, we're 2018 and four years past since my first complaint and still no answer. No phone call, no email, no letter, absolutely nothing. And with my information, the tragedies of Paris, Nice, Berlin, London, etc. could have been avoided and the Swiss octagon arrested. Because I knew that they would hit on a Friday 13th in Paris, because on exactly this date, the French King Philip the Fair had all the Templars arrested in the Kingdom of France on Friday the 13th of October in 1307. And exactly because of this, the Swiss and the octagon Nazi Templars still hate France and the French to this very day. But only 16 years before, the Knights Templars had already founded Switzerland on August the 1st, 1291, in the very last year of the Crusades, because they saw the problems coming at them. Only 325 Templars were rounded up and tens of thousands of them made it to their new base in the Alps. Therefore, the first day in August, the day upon which the Templars founded Switzerland, is the national holiday of the Swiss. All have a day off, no one works, shops are closed and fireworks in Templar style lit in the air. Kaboom! It's Templars Day in Switzerland. The last year of the Crusades was 1291, and the last Templar stronghold called Acres fell on May 18th, 1291. And just two and a half months later, the sheer time to get back in the Alps, the Knights Templars founded their Scion in the Alps on August the 1st, 1291. The ruins of Acres now lie in the north of Israel. And when looking at the Swiss flag, one can see it has the very same red and white Templars colors. A simplified Templars cross on the only flag in the world that is a square with four equal length. This is the cross of the Hospitallers, like a Swiss white cross on a red underground. Because when the Templars went underground in 1291, all of a sudden, the hospitalers simultaneously popped up again to control the vast Templars' properties and wealth, thus the Swiss cross. So before and at the beginning of the Crusades, the hospitalers were there, who went over into the military Templars during the Crusades to become the business-minded hospitalers again after the Crusades. Still the same ones, merely changing jackets and inversing crosses and collars. So the pre-Crusade hospitalers are in fact the predecessors of the Red Cross. The Red Cross is supposed to heal, but it is in fact a corrupted Swiss spy organization bearing the Red Cross of the Templars, just switching collars throughout history. Therefore, on the famous Swiss army knife, one can witness a real coat of arms of the Knights Templars, 
and why in fact those two colors red and white on the Swiss Templars flag. What's the deeper meaning behind that? The pharaohs of ancient Egypt had two kingdoms, Upper Egypt in the south called the Berhet, in Demotic or pharaoh's written language, which means the White House wearing a white crown and for Lower Egypt in the north in Demotic Bertasser, the Red House with a red crown on Pharaoh's head. Yes, exactly. It's because of this that the US president in Washington DC presides in the White House with a huge obelisk and symbol of the Pharaonic domination in the backyard next to it. Accordingly, the white Pharaonic house were the heretic Pharaohs of the New World Order and the Red Pharaonic House, the original Old World Order of the Pharaonic Primogenitura. Equally, the Demotic Per for house also forms the etymology for Paris. In the Old Pharaonic form, Per Isis, used for the House of Isis, which is not a house to live in, nor the Big Pyramid, as mainstream historians were taught at the university. No, it's a royal house or royal lineage, just like the pharaonic per a, from which the etymology for the very word pharaoh derived from meaning the big house, which once more is not the pyramid taught by the mainstream history school, but the worldwide grand royal house and global web of pharaoh's bloodlines. And because the real aim of the Crusades were the pyramids of Egypt, out of which the Knights Templars got their Templars treasure, being them the notorious grave robbers, and therefore the name Freemason. Freemason. Thus, giving the two colors, red and white, of the United Kingdom of Pharaoh to their Templars logo, a red cross presenting a two-dimensional pyramid, as you can see here, on a white flag or garment, and in the end, to the red and white base in the Alps. Only inversed as a white cross on a red underground, and represents the Hospitallers, an extremely wealthy business organization into which the Templars partially emerged and disappeared. These two red and white pharaonic kingdoms were in a constant state of strife and war until at a certain point they decided to make peace with each other in order to conquer the world together and with this goal in mind founded the United Kingdom of Pharaoh with the red and white crowns worn together in one single red and white crown. This is the uh, specific reason for former German uniforms to be white, British red and the French blue, the traditional royal colors of Pharaoh. And because the Templars are true descendants of the Pharaohs, which I will explain more later on, arrived back from the Crusades in Europe, they said, this here will be our neutral base, which will never be involved in any wars so we can keep all our valuables and all our gold, money and documents in safety. Where all the NGOs and instruments of global rule of the new pharaonic system will be, like the Red Cross, the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the Olympic Games, the OMS for the doctors and even the FIFA and UEFA for soccer, football, all highly corrupted by Swissy, the International Ice Hockey Federation, etc. You name it, it's all there. Neutral Switzerland, not for us the people. Not neutral for us, but only for our pharaonic masters, feudal aristocratic lords who always keep their peace talks between warring nations by their, as presidents, camouflage feudal lords in Geneva, the diplomatic capital of the world, and their own base. There, where there's horrible CERN lays. 
This pharaonic world elite also sends their offspring to some rich boarding school in the motherland, their base, like in Montreux, Gstaad, Lausanne, etc. Even Dr. Mengele did so. There was also a third crown of Pharaoh, the Blue War Crown, and it's therefore they're all for Pharaoh's warring colonial and imperialist nations have these three Pharaonic colors of the three crowns in their flags, blue, white, and red, like France, England, UK, the Netherlands, America, USA, and Russia. Red and white, the United Kingdom of Pharaoh, and original colors of the flags of England and France, and blue for war, surely because Pharaoh's nobility has blue blood. Like the blue helmets of Pharaoh's New World Order, United Nations, for the war, para bellum. Like Pharaoh's blue war crown, and afterwards in the same Geneva as the UN, the Geneva peace talks in Pharaoh's red and white neutral base. Templars actually were no monks who defended fine Christian valors against these horrible Muslims in Jerusalem. But Templars were aristocracy's noblemen, every single one of them. Pharaoh's European nobility has this typical harsh law of succession amongst each other, according to which only the firstborn son or primogenitor has the sole right or divine right to it all, the castle, the power, the land, and the first right used prime noctis on all women in the area to rape the European women on the first night of their marriage. And for the second, third, fourth sons, there was nothing, nothing at all. That's why there were perpetual fights at the court for the succession. And even two poor uh, second, third, fourth sons aristocrats, they even had to share one horse. There were conspiracies, poisonings, or a dagger in the back in some murky corner of the castle. So for these sons, second, third, fourth born, the nobility's tradition foresaw the refusal sometimes rather hide in a monastery. And in the Middle Ages, there were only three things, the castle, the church, and the people. And a nobleman most certainly does not mingle among the commoners, because there you have to work up to your neck into the cow shit every day. And a nobleman, does not work. At a certain moment, there were so many aristocratic descendants without power, without money, nor a castle, living in monasteries and temple of God. They started to call themselves Templars and created their logo of two poor aristocrats without a kingdom, even sharing one single horse and selling it to the people as to brave monk warriors in the service of Christ, vowing total poverty and obedience to Christ, saying amongst themselves, we also are aristocratic descendants of Pharaoh, and we want our own kingdom, but for a kingdom you need money. So for the military backup, they told those stupid Europeans that out there in Jerusalem, a certain Jesus lives with his grandmother and needs to be saved from the Saracens. If not, God would smite all with fire from hell, provoking the end of the world. Just like a thousand years later, Saddam Hussein would have had weapons of mass destruction, threatening the entire world and humanity as a whole. It came out in the end, all lies by Colin Powell and his spells. Same technique, same tactics, same liars. During the Crusades, Jerusalem was just the gateway to the real goal, the pyramids of Egypt. Just as the Templars do not owe their name from Solomon's Temple in Jerusalem. A symbol for the Jews, who even today still bang their heads against the walls of King Solomon's Temple, to honor this aristocratic ruler, not of Jewish, but Pharaonic descent.
religious dogmatism without understanding leads to wall bangers and where we probably have the word Bible bangers from. And at this same place, the Crusaders, under Templar command, the latter, so the Templars, of same Pharaonic origin, just as the not very Jew, King Solomon. In the year 1099, during the First Crusade, on the same day, July 14th, of the French national holiday, remembering the French Revolution and beginning of the French New World Order, these crusaders were ordered to commit a gruesome massacre commanded by the Knights Templars on Jews, Muslims and even Christians. Just as the Swiss Nazi Templars repeated this during the Nazi era. The real goal of the crusades was Egypt and the treasures of their ancestors in the pyramids, which became the notorious Templars treasure which they took to the Imperium in the Alps with which they founded the Swiss banks. As a matter of fact, history teaches us that the Templars were the banks of Europe in the Middle Ages. They were the world's first real bankers who invented the Czech. And that's why later on in history, the Swiss banks collaborated with the Nazis. Because the Nazis were the Templars, who both did the same things, steal, murder, lie, collect wealth and search for the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. So at the very same time in 1291, when these extremely powerful, wealthy and the world's first multinational just vanished from the face of the earth into nowhere, so the Templars I mean, at the very same time a couple of simple Swiss peasants suddenly rose against the extremely powerful Austro-Hungarian Empire of Habsburg and using perfect military skills never seen before. Now isn't that funny, eh? De facto, or in fact, the outcome of the entire Crusader campaign was decided in and by the large quantity of available Arab soldiers and where Saladin or Salaheddin was the caliph of or king of Egypt, so to speak. And this is why Saladin, the aristocrat from direct Pharaoh's bloodline, has led the Crusaders go free in the reconquest of Jerusalem in 1187, October the 2nd, and spared all lives, where eyewitnesses of the time confirm how priests had their donkeys fully loaded. Well, yeah, this was the notorious Templar's treasure. And those priests, in fact, the Templars, are not because Saladin, the warlord, had such a noble character, but because he was initiated into the worldwide aristocratic internal conspiracy of the new system of ruling or new world order. He, in fact, let them all go and with them all their belongings. Oh my, isn't that generous in a 200 year war upon life or death? Jerusalem was just a temporary safe house of the Templars treasure, no more than that. And the Temple of the Templars was not Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, but just a monastery and God's temple. Not one in particular, but many all over France and all over Europe. And Saladin was a New World Order traitor, lying to his subjects and conspiring with his European aristocratic brothers of his own Per A people in another geostrategical war around Pharaoh's treasure, just like the ones today for the opium in Afghanistan and the oil in Iraq, Syria, Libya and the rest. Dear Muslim people, the enemy is not the white man who suffered even more than you. 2000 years of war by this aristocracy, Caesar's genocide on the European peoples, massacres by the Romans, King torturing the white men and raping white women, two devastating world wars leaving millions of white men, women and their children dead, all by the hand of Pharaoh, the enemy within. And look here how the, the, the German Emperor here says, 
William II, king of Germany, who killed, who murdered m millions of Germans. How they give presents among each other here to Saladin, Salah, Salah And um, they, they were conspiring together, wakey, wakey. It's the same aristocracy, you know, the king of Morocco, the emperor or the... Um, the king of Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, they're all, they're all friends with the European aristocracy and we die. Arab people die, Turkish people die, European people die, German, English, the Franks, and they live. Wake up, everybody. Yeah, look at it. This is a, a marble tomb, tomb. You know, they're, they're all pals. It was given by the German emperor to the um, to uh, Salah And uh, afterwards of course you see here the sun hieroglyph here see my film the pharaoh show they're all a bunch of pharaohs and they have us kill each other i make a lot of good encounters with muslims they're not the enemy uh, they're of course they're not all good you know but um uh, they're not the enemy uh, a lot of muslims they help me they feed me they take me hitchhiking turks and arabs i have no problem with them just like um, Cassius Clay, the boxer, said, I have no problems with the Viet Cong. The white man is indeed the biggest victim in the entire history because he dared to fight back in a way no other race has ever done. But they fight us from within, like a cancer or a virus, and they look like us now and talk like us through the Jus Prime Noctis, the rape of our women where they injected their pharaonic genetics like into our women. Yeah, look, this is what they did in my country, South Africa. Concentration camps, killing 28,000 children and, uh, because they couldn't win the war. And this was Lord Kitchener, an aristocrat, and Lord Winston Churchill, born in Blenheim Palace, the son of a duke. It's all pharaohs, and they kill us. You know, that's the enemy. They're on all key positions, like the police is a foreign occupying army pretending to be from our ranks, which they are not. And they gather and conspire against us in their secret societies. In 1291, after the Crusades, the Templars' treasure, the Knights Templars and the aristocracy all made it safely back to Europe. While the ordinary Crusader foot soldiers like the Franks, the English and other Germanic warriors were as usually betrayed by their leaders and all perished in the desert sand. And at the same time, back in Europe, the women stood back alone without protection because the man didn't come back anymore. Then two Swiss inquisitors called Heinrich Kramer from Mulhouse, in those days belonging to Switzerland, and Jacobus Sprenger from Basel in 1486 wrote and published a book called The Malius Maleficarum, or The Witch's Hammer, in order to burn the remaining good women of Europe at the stakes, the loyal women who refused to collaborate with the lords of evil. They stood defenseless against Swiss mercenaries roaming all over Europe, who later became the Swiss guard of the the Pope's guard of the Vatican. This is why the burnings of so-called witches took their highest toll near the Swiss border, like in German, German towns like Bamberg, Würzburg, Nuremberg, all according to plan and meticulously executed like a Swiss watch and initiated by the Pope's letter of January 20th, 1260 just before the end of the Crusades, in 1291, the founding of their Swiss base, and the Pope ordering to start imprisoning and torturing European women who didn't want to collaborate with the masters, while their men were sent into the desert sand without water to make sure they wouldn't make it back to Europe to defend their women and save them from the stakes of the Swiss Inquisition. As the Spanish, they never burned any women. Same technique repeated by Napoleon and Hitler to send French and German soldiers into the Russian winter without warm clothes and without sufficient food supply to make sure they wouldn't come back, creating either sand mummies during the Crusades or show mummies, snow mummies in the Second World War or by Napoleon.
And when the Templars of pharaonic origin came into Switzerland, they were talking French and called the place Suisse, Suisse, for Sœur d'Isis, the sisters of Isis. Also, because traditionally French has always been, and still is, the language of the entire European nobility, even in Germany, Poland, England, Russia, the Netherlands, everywhere. This is why later on French became the diplomatic language, with the diplomatic center, Geneva, of course, their motherland. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt have never disappeared, and the actual base is Switzerland, nice, and central in the middle of it all, on the water tab and money tab of Europe, and where they talk four different languages for bringing havoc to Europe in four wind directions. Those who speak German to the north and infiltrate the Germans, French into France in the west, Italian into Italy, south, and Retoromanic to the east. Oh, very smart indeed. Well, the Templars were the first multinationals in history, and this is the result. Their base in the Alps stretching out in all directions, being the cause of the CIA and NATO's compass showing north, west, south and east. As Switzerland operates in all directions, linguistically, financially, militarily, militarily you name it. And they're all Templar organizations, you know, the... Um, the NATO and the, um, the Central Intelligence, the first uh, director, and all these directors, there was Swiss, Alan Dulles, Templar stuff. So CIA, NATO, they're all octagon Templar organization from Switzerland. In the Bible, the Quran and the Torah, it says that Pharaoh and his army drowned and disappeared in the sea. But hey guys, that doesn't mean they all disappeared. There was only one you're talking about. But they had sons, daughters, cousins and uncles. What about them, silly? And what about all the other pharaohs we know? We know there were more than one. There was Akhenaton, Ramses the Great, Tut Tutankhamon, Cleopatra and hundreds more. What about them bunch then? Okay, let me explain it to you. Of course, the sea didn't just open up just like uh, that and swallows them like a predator. It's a metaphor, as these books are full of. In the Bible, the sea is symbolic for the sea of peoples. So Pharaoh disappeared into the sea of peoples. They are amongst us and so mixed with us that we cannot, cannot even recognize them anymore. And neither can they. That's why they need secret handshakes and secret symbols to recognize each other and secret societies to get to know each other. And this is why more than 50% of the Europeans carry the pharaonic DNA in their blood, which has been discovered around 2009. In Switzerland, that's more than 90%. But of course, the, uh, the prostitutes of the uh, mainstream media they turned it the other way around and they say that the um, here like here in the newspaper that the um, uh, the pharaohs that come from europe but no they injected their pharaonic genetics into our women i will explain it to you and when the pharaohs came to europe they built castles everywhere to conquer europe and the europeans so they became the aristocracy with their blue blood and blue for the war. Because of them, we have wars without end throughout history. Reminds you, there are no castles in Europe before the year 1000. And there are no European kings from us, the white people. There is not such a thing as an original European king. It's all imports from Egypt and forced upon our lives through terror rape, bloodshed, wars, and many lies and deceit. Wake up, people, and see Pharaoh with their blue aristocratic blood threshing down into humanity. Castles from the year thousands are extremely rare. So roughly speaking, there were no castles from before the year thousand, and there were not no aristocrats from before the year thousand. There were there, there was no nobility before the year thousand. 
So where did they all come from all of a sudden, eh? Well, we know who the builders are with their pyramids, viaducts and squares and compasses, don't we know? Not even 100 years ago, it was still perfectly clear that everything belonged to the aristocracy, the nobility, the land, the power, and even our women through the first rite of the Jus Prime Noctis, the bride having her first night after the wedding with the Lord in his royal bed in the castle. That's why so many Swissies have that cold pharaonic genetics running through their veins meaning that the aristocracy are the descendants of Pharaoh, who injected their pharaonic genetics into the whole of our women on that first night, if you know what I mean. Or do you really think that the aristocracy just left it all 100 years ago and just gave all the power on earth away to some politicians and their police state? No. And like Pharaoh and the aristocracy, today's ruling elite still don't talk with us and still only marry amongst themselves. Because it's still the same bloodline, just changing jackets. And because there were too many uprisings, especially in Russia and France, the aristocracy decided to entirely rule through secret Freemason lodges. Yes, affirmative. All today's politicians are both Freemasons and aristocrats and descendants of Pharaoh. It's because of that that Freemasons worship these cult objects of their ancestors from ancient Egypt, like obelisks, pyramids, the all seeing eye, Horus, etc., the entire ancestral tradition. As a fact, more and more descendants of Pharaoh were born over the years in the various castles of Europe who all wanted to be the king, thus leading to various wars between kings, castles and royal lineages, fights about kings who wanted to stay king forever, pass the kingship down to their children and all descendants ever after. There were more and more Tsar, Sir, Sires and Pharaohs who all wanted to be the king. And that's why one war followed up the other, in which the normal man, we, only let his life and do the wars for them, as on a chessboard, therefore the Freemason checkerboard configuration. At a certain point, they agreed it couldn't go on like this any longer, and constantly destroying it all. There had to come a new system, a system in which any one of them could be the king for a period of four, five or seven years. And so democracy, the hidden feudal system was born. But who's going to vote because none of us, none of us is neutral, they said. Well, let's create a sort of circus in which we let the people vote or the demos in Greek. The people will vote in a sort of rotating dictatorship in which all the political candidates are pure Tsar and pharaonic nobility, who in fact, when voted for, radiate this air of personal happiness, because they just got elected to be the king and pharaoh for a period of four years. Democracy is their cynical word, meaning that the people rules. <laughs> That's why there are the Bilderberger on all controlling internal organization, which already existed during the times of kings, but under another name, to solve the in internal troubles of these pharaohs amongst themselves. Problems like succession and world domination. The latter they call with a euphemist expression, globalization, a soft expression for world domination in pharaonic equally representing uh, this new system called the New World Order, executed through Freemasonry, through which any of them can become the king for a period of four, five or seven years. But who's gonna vote? A member asked. Oh, let's have the people vote, another said, because they're so dumb and stupid and will never understand anything. And at the same time, we make them think that the people are ruling, like that we keep them happy, satisfied and peaceful. But in fact, democracy is not for and by the people, but for our rulers, so they can be elected democratically, 
and as soon as they're elected they'll do what they please anyway so there is no self-government by the people and there never has been any either and so democracy was born out of the aristocracy a new feudal system with a thin layer of gentlemen's camouflage altogether ruling from a thing they've cynically called parliament etymologically from the french parlement from parler et mentir to talk and to lie it's all straight in our faces parlement and switzerland is the oldest new world order democracy in the world so let's get to the bottom of it if there is a new world order then logically there should have been a predecessor called the old world order otherwise there wouldn't be a new one right so what is this old world order then well that's the old feudal system of kings queens princes and princesses following the system of the firstborn or primogenitor and out of the Templars with their Swiss base were born Freemasonry and their new world order consequently to solve their internal wars of the old world order like the persecutions of the Templars by the French King Philip the Fair who refused to surrender his reign and throne to the new system called new world order also entitling second third and fourth sons to power this is why the Templars of the New World Order and their Swiss mercenaries were in La Bastille in Paris, where they tortured French citizens and terrorized the French people through hunger, inflicting famine and, per and persecution to provoke the revolution, so the people would rise against the monarch to finish off the Old World Order. And so it happened in 1793, three years uh, or four years after the French Revolution, when the French King Louis XVI lost his head and the Queen too, two heads in the basket. The same happened in Russia barely a hundred years later with the Tsar family. Same technique applied. Never in history there has been a revolution by the people, but they were a transition from the old world order to the new world order. And the slogan liberty equality and fraternity not for us the people in the promising new era because we're still the slaves of our feudal lords fraternity to end the fight between the king's son who should be brothers and this is why a freemason lodge is called a fraternity equality amongst the king's sons and no more primogenitor more rights to the firstborn then to the others and liberty so all brothers and kings sons have the liberty to become the king for a period of four years this is why the french masons gave the statue of liberty to the u.s being the first nation after switzerland to obtain the new world order in 1776 and just 13 years before the french in 1789 and think of the 13 stripes in the flag folks well there are more reasons for that as well the old world order is what is called a vertical rule where the king or pharaoh decides straight down to the people and the very lowest on the ladder whereas the new world order is a horizontal rule in which they all rule together in a parliament the congress the senate and this is for instance why mr trump cannot just do what he wants because there still is the state the senate and congress to favor his actions and this is why trump will never be able to fulfill all his empty promises which he never even intended to fulfill anyway this is how the new world order horizontal rule functions and this is why the Swiss flag has a vertical line cut in half by a horizontal line in transparent white on a blood red underground. It's the symbol of the new world order, if you like. 
The new world order is Freemason horizontal rule, a new system of the kings, who have the logo of the pyramid, which is the square and compass, because the square is at 90 degrees, with which you can make a square or base of a pyramid, which stands for the number four, as there are four corners or four lines in a square. So here you can see this one here is the square and it stands at 90 degrees so with 90 degrees you can make like here the base of the pyramid which has one two three four corners or four so it stands for the number four the square the compass stands at 60 degrees with which you can make a triangle or side of a pyramid having three times 60 degrees corners and three lines so representing the number three you see here is the compass it stands at 60 degrees almost the same as here this here so it's not entirely but uh, so with this thing here you can make a six, 60 60 60 degree pyramid so that's the side of a pyramid so with this thing you can make in fact a pyramid three plus four so, 4 plus 3 makes 7, the holy number of Pharaoh and the pyramid. Therefore, the seventh letter of the alphabet is a G. And positioned between the square and compass, the symbol of a pyramid by Pharaoh's descendants, the Freemasons, who in the higher degrees are all royals of Pharaoh's nobility and their new horizontal system of the new world order and uh, in the new world order we all must carry an identity card with our personal slave number on it and when the uniformed king's knights knock on the window of your car papers please then this is a slave control like a farmer controls his cows and if you refuse they'll take you out of circulation as they say it the name America is fully pharaonic, as I've explained to you in my film The Pharaoh Show eight years ago. A good name for a new world order nation. So the Americans thought to abolish the rule of the British monarchy, royals, old world order. In fact, they just got a new system in return. The new world order, horizontal rule. Ah, it means big or pregnant. Me, mer or meru is the word for a pyramid. Ri, the sun, like the sun god, Re, or Ra, or Amun Ra, and Ka is the soul when alive, all in demotic, the written language of Pharaoh. Read from right to left, it means the reincarnation, A, of the big pyramid, Me, will take place where our souls, Ka, will live under the sun, Ri, America, Amerika. And there she is, the reincarnation of the big pyramid on the dollar. It's been said that Americo Vespucci discovered America. But you don't call a street, land or town after one's first name, do you know? Logically, it should be the United States of Vespucci and the Vespuccians. But it isn't the case. So they lie, as always. So I filmed the, um, the Novus Ordo Seclorum here in France, in Normandy, at the beaches of, uh, of Omaha Beach. So we all died for the new world order. Initially, in these Freemason lodges, they said in Latin that a chicken is not a bird and a woman no human. Because they're all fraternities, being the essence of a fraternity. And why fraternities? Because the, um, the, they were the sons of the kings and through the use prime noctis you know when they raped their women they made an alliance with many women so that's why we got here but they of course these pharaohs they don't give the same power to our women the french king never understood why until his head rolled into the basket because they lied to him telling him that the people were happy had enough to eat and were dancing in the streets it was a conspiracy where he never could have gotten out. And because of it all, and this fine liberty, we all have to carry an ID with a personal slave number on it. 
and if the king's knights in their shiny uniforms of the new world order knock on the window of your car and order you to show it you have no other option than doing so because it's a slave control just as a farmer checks out his cows and you see the man he is he is incredibly enslaved he can't see he, he can't move and the women is outside why because they have a um, an alliance with the masters they want to have the power and they gave him the power because the evil one he knows that a woman can't see the danger she's like a little bird you know that needs twigs for the nest that's why it shows the, the child as well this guy must have been a freemason and one of them a pharaoh the one who painted it here because he knows it and this is actually the story of adam and eve and she has an alliance with the snake you know watch this film of mine on my, on the same channel here about the snake and our masters here this is the alliance the women have this is the story of adam eve and it couldn't be written otherwise in the bible you know it has to be written symbolically but people don't understand it and here you can see why the snake these are our masters the snake and also jesus he's from a line of pharaohs he's from the the house of david the kings the aristocracy the nobility who are pharaohs and he didn't like it you know like lady diana or john f kennedy so they stand up and uh also didn't have any choice because her own clan didn't want her anymore so she had to choose us and um this is the snake this is adam and eve this this is what the story is about i guess these ones here um won't make that alliance with the uh, the pharaohs and they will stay loyal to their husbands and that's why pharaoh's gonna kill them they're gonna just as they did with the jews they're gonna wake up in a concentration camp and to my opinion well it's not my culture i'm not a muslim but to my opinion, they, these women still look like women, not like the European women with their hormone pills who don't even look like women anymore. They don't behave like women. We are lost, yeah. Right after the French Revolution, Freemason Napoleon came with a hidden hand under his jacket, a Freemason sign and spreading the new world order all over Europe through massive wars, abolishing the nobility out of the people's eye as a distractive maneuver in reality they went underground and disappear within the sea of peoples once more this is why there is the hidden hand they hide everything and they disappear this is how the templars little by little infiltrated the french and later on the u.s society with the help of swiss mercenaries and the templars command who are now on the highest key positions of France, the US with 1 million Swiss Americans and in fact the entire world. Like Swiss Manuel Valls and former Prime Minister of France, Marine Le Pen of the Front National openly showing a Swiss flag saying she wants a Swiss system in France. Well, not bad for a French nationalist, eh? To identify identify yourself with a flag of a foreign nation and look even the prime minister no not the prime minister the uh, the foreign minister of uh, the uk boris johnson he's of swiss descent the swiss they came uh, over the palatines just like trump and obama they came to england and the us and the woman was a nobleman of a part of the a member of the nobility uh, i mean the uh, the mummy Watch all my videos on my YouTube channels, Gure and Chatsifrat, for further proofs. It's all there. Just think of the Vatican Swiss Guard and their bloody history butchering the defenseless. Oh yeah, that's what Swiss is good at. And in 1831, because of these fine Swiss qualities, the French Foreign Legion was also founded by the Swiss with the first leading commander, the Swiss Colonel von Stoffel, of pure Templar descent, of course, and under the French king, who had lived most of his life in Switzerland, just like Mussolini, Lenin, Marshall, 
Pétain, Rudolf Hess, Mengele, etc. They all lived in Switzerland for a big part of their lives and where they got taught and instructed by the Swiss Brotherhood of Evil. Watch this film, it explains a lot. The symbol of the pharaonic dignity par excellence is the lion or the sphinx. And therefore, an aristocratic coat of arms is always held by two lions, each on either side, or one or two lions at the entrance of a castle. But there never were any lions in Europe. This means that in the UK and the American, Australian, Canadian and New Zealand colonies, a foreign power has always ruled. Because we in Europe have wolves and bears and no lions. Uh, this is the coat of arms of Sweden with the three crowns for Isis, Horus and Sets. It's always three. And um, of course there were no lions in Sweden. I mean it's too cold. A lion has to lie in the sun and do nothing. Just as their counterparts of the nobility of Pharaoh. Lie in the sun and do, and do nothing. And how knew the aristocrats in the Middle Ages at all about the existence of some lion? Well, the average Englishman or other European didn't even know what was happening on the other side of the hill at the end of the valley. And I even filmed medieval castles in Europe, France, like this one here, with huge obelisks and symbol of the pharaonic domination in the backyard. Just like at the White House, the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. And still the same thing going on everywhere. How did they know at all what an obelisk was in the deep Middle Ages, if not the entire aristocracy and nobility were descendants of Pharaoh? Well, anyway, they were and still are not homegrown European aristocrats who had never seen anything else than good old damp and cold northern lands. Let me tell you that for sure. There are no European kings, queens, princes, princesses, dukes, earls, marquises, barons and counts, and there never were either. They're all import from Egypt of the pharaohs, who never drowned themselves in the, into the Red Sea either. They're here, folks. They are the war makers, our lords, generals, presidents, and Switzerland is their base of evil. Now look at this here. What do you think this is? Hey, eh? well, it's a pyramid with the world domination on it, a crown. They're all pharaohs. They're not from here. When I translate "ari" as in aristocracy, aristocracy, or the Aryans, ari on. In German, that's Arier, the Aryans. In Demotic, when I translate it in Demotic, which is the written language of Pharaoh, then A, it means big or pregnant. And when a woman is pregnant, that's quite big. And Ri is the sun. As the sun god, Re, Ra, or Amun Ra. So A, Ri means pregnant sun. That they've come from the sun. And were born up there, these pharaonic sun worships, worshippers who call themselves Aria, Arians. That they've descended from the heavens and are not from here. And when focusing the complexity of their works, like the pyramids, their superior knowledge, and the sly and utter ruthless way of dominating humanity, well, then it should be clear why they have as such and see themselves as the superior race standing over us, where in demotic language of Pharaoh, aristocracy and Aryan are one and the same thing. My dear Muslim brothers, my dear right-wing nationalists and my dear ultra-left-wingers, the enemy are not the Jews, as the Swiss Templar Nazis want to make us believe. But the enemy of the US, the UK and the entire Anglo-Saxon world are the pharaohs and pharaohs aristocracy with their main base Switzerland of the Nazi Templars. It is pharaoh, the evil of and scourge of humanity, testified in the Quran, in the Bible and in the Torah as the incarnation of evil and abundantly written about. 
and Pharaoh will put Europe's Muslims into very high-tech concentration camps, just as the Swiss did with the Jews during World War II. Just watch the history of Europe for yourselves, and who always ruled. There was always these blokes in their castles with knights, dungeons, and torture chambers. Did you see any Jews then? Who sort of, like those in Jerusalem, were banging their heads on the walls of some European castles? as they preferably follow this tradition in their spare time during the weekend? No, not really, did we? Now, let's have a closer look at this, and at this Sarkozy geezer, former president of France, who is a Jew from his mother's side, by his mother, André Mala, a Greek Jewess. Okay, clear case after the Ju Judaic laws, mother Jew, real Jew boy. But it's not as simple as that, because Sarkozy also is also a real aristocrat from his father's side, and even descending from a bloodline of true Hungarian kings, with a real Sarkozy family royal coat of arms held by two lions on each side and all that. Now, what then is he supposed to be first, a Jew or an aristocrat? Well, an aristocrat before all, of course, and Jews also have kings, like King David or King Solomon, just like us. It would be the same as asking Prince Charles of Windsor, Gotha Coburg, if he's English or an aristocrat first. Of course, he would eloquently avoid the question and just think by himself, Oh, these awkward questions are getting more and more stupid by the day. English, that's the commoners, isn't it? Oh, they play football, or how do you call it again in the colonies? As indeed soccer. Not so far away. No, that's sport, I meant. Not the colony. And so it is for Sarkozy. He's first an aristocrat of royal pharaoh, and long time after that, a Jew. And even more time after that, a Frenchman, without a single drop of French blood. Uh, that's why Sar Cozy has the Sar part in his name. First of all, that's an abbreviation for Son, Son Altesse Royale, S A R, meaning His Royal Highness, uh, which is the official title of Prince Charles, the Duke Henri of Luxembourg, etc. Sar. Here you see too, Sar, le Prince Royal, the Royal Prince. Thus calling themselves, because in the demotic language of Pharaoh, Sar means a king, as in a sarcophagus, sarcophagus, a box to put the king in when he's dead, the king box, so to speak, or as in Caesar, the king of Rome, where etymologically the German word Kaiser for an emperor is from. Furthermore, the Tsar or Tsar from Russia, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the British royal family Windsor, original Tsar, or you pronounce it Windsor, Windsor, and Tsar Cozy, the king of France, for seven or five years, because seven is the number of the pyramid. Oh, he looks a bit like Mr. Putin, doesn't he? Those are all Sars or Pharaoh kings, from which also derive the words Sire or Sir, yes sir, no sir, like in Sir Winston Churchill, who was born in Blen Blenheim Palace, his father a duke, all from Sar. This is why in posh upper class British the word Sir has to be pronounced Sar and not Sir, yes sir, to show one's solid origins. Without exception, this global elite put their money, or rather our money in fact, their tax evasion, in their red and white United Kingdom of Pharaoh, Switzerland. Like 80 billion French euros every year, 100 billion German euros annually, or 450 billion US dollars that annually end up in Switzerland. Because throughout history, the aristocracy nobility never paid any taxes. But it's them, finally, who invented Texas, so they could parasite on the backs of uh, 
some starving people while they partied at the court of the castle with our women food to scoff and beverage for the fun all taxed together and all that continues to this very day made possible through their base of the world's financial elite in the alps and when in october 2010 the young austrian wolfgang umvogel whom you see here wanted to sell swiss banking cds to the irs u.s internal revenue service and to germany with black lists names and accounts concerning the elite's tax evasion into their swiss base the swiss secret service of the octagon arrested him and consequently they suicided the young austrian and i mean he has been suicided in the notorious high security torture descent detention center of uh, amthaus bern mostly used for regular unwanted immigrants asylum seekers with not enough money to afford switzerland and for political prisoners like myself so me sean ross contacted the biggest austrian newspaper the kronenzeitung helped them write an article about it which they published and it appeared in that in that newspaper that the young man was suicided after he had been severely tortured by code o2t torch oxygen deprivation see the zurich files in the internet so here you can read my name here in the uh, in the newspaper and he was tortured with o2t so when the 100 percent corrupt and fascist swiss authorities read the article on, and on top of that my name in it the swiss octagon sent me an anti-terrorist score to arrest me intimidating me and my family by doing an entire grand scale house search a huge operation of which the mafia should would be proud this happens when you criticize the swiss and their all-powerful banks my arrest got published in the biggest swiss newspaper called blick which i filmed and uploaded on youtube afterwards so you can see that here i became threats from swiss policemen who were all infected by some weird swiss fascist ideas they hit me and incessant arrests wherever i went putting things together to criminalize me in order to make me shut up and stop me from expressing myself and I have witnesses and video recordings of that all. But in spite of the obvious range of proofs, the Swiss fascist judiciary just forbid me to talk more about the daily Swiss terror instead, opening all the doors for even more Swiss legal terror. So I refuse to have me silenced up because all I say is the truth. And you can still see on YouTube how the Swiss Nazi police aggresses me and how corrupt Swiss cops hit me and threaten my family. In fact, all I've published on YouTube, I did so under the First Amendment of America and under US law. So in fact, by international standard law, the Swiss fascist judiciary has no jurisdiction at all over what I've published in San Bruno, California. That would be the state court of California responsible for any possible court case and not the banking laws of Switzerland and the Nazi censorship. But Swiss don't care ab about any law at all. They never did. And they just can do what they want. Now the corrupt Swiss Nazi court of justice is threatening me with even more prison time if I'd reveal the names of those violent, corrupt Swiss cops again. But they're still available in some of my other videos. Uh, which even under torture and imprisonment i didn't take down as they wanted me to do so swissy tries to impose the swiss laws of silence on the u.s first amendment so under this swiss tyranny i decided it would be wiser not to go out alone anymore and i stayed most of the time inside over a period of four long years not going out at all for months in a stretch because there was nobody who wanted to accompany me on a walk outside. Until again, in a large police operation on July 16, 2015, the uniformed Swiss state Nazis kidnapped me in front of my utterly shocked and crying children.
three and 13 years old against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs or several years in prison. So they are stayed for the next three and a half months in several high security torture detention centers, lost more than 30 kilos in three months until my wife had the rest of the ransom together while making huge debts. Wolfgang Umfogel, the Austrian whistleblower about the Swiss banks was dead, but I was still alive. And where should I get 20,000 Swiss francs from all of a sudden? You know, the ransom, they, this criminal organization, they, they held me in prison for. I'm not a criminal with lots of money stashed somewhere. In fact, the Swiss Nazi police and their judiciary are a terrorist organization who kidnap people for ransom only for expressing themselves about things they don't want you to say, nor even think. Thought crime, they call this. Today, we see all over Europe a dangerous tendency rising of Nazi organizations like the Swiss SV SVP, the French Front National or the German NPD. Call their members after Swiss example to join the police. The army fascist or the army or fascist student organizations and finally the justice department and politics and in switzerland we're back in nazi germany in 1933 already since quite a while for all these organized swiss crimes against me and my family swiss crimes against europe swiss crimes against humanity and for these indescribable indescribable swiss crimes against the jewish people as Swiss Nazi Templars organized the Holocaust and the Second World War. For all this, I would like to make an official complaint somewhere. And for all I talk here, I have documentaries on my YouTube channel, Gure and Chatse Fratz, like the murder on the French minister Robert Boulin 30 years ago, organized by the Swiss Octogon Nazi Templars about the poisoning of the entire French town, Le Pont Saint-Esprit, leaving several dead. So the Swiss could better sell their LSD to the CIA MK Ultra monarch, with CIA director Alan Dulles and J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI, both of Swiss descent. Hoover's real name was Huber. There are currently 1 million Swiss Americans in the US on all key positions. US Presidents Eisenhower, Trump, Barack Obama and Herbert Hoover, real name Hoover, just like J. Edgar Hoover, all Swiss. So here's the American Swiss foundations and there are many, you know, officially here you see of the, by the Swiss state in this article and there are many many more articles in the uh, internet where you can in this article you can read there are one million swiss americans in the us and this is official it's by the swiss state you see the templars logo here and it starts here with dear young leaders so they are the um, it's it's addressed to the swiss americans they are leading america so this guy is one of the uh, seven heads of state, like in the revelations of John, the seven heads, Switzerland has seven heads. And they talk about America and Switzerland like sister republics. You remember I told you about the sisters of Isis? Well, there you go. One million Swiss Americans. And there are 600 Swiss companies in the US who create half a million jobs. Well, guess who's working there, eh, Swissy? There's a lot more in this article, um, but I'm not even going to read it all. So there's a lot of, about Swiss Americans in the internet. You just punch Swiss Americans and there's a lot, you know, this and that. So here there's some Swiss Americans in Wikipedia, Barack Obama, Herbert Hoover, Dwight D. Eisenhower, I Swiss A, J. Edgar Hoover, well, they're all, they're all here. And there are many, 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 many more. You know, Trump is one of them, eh? So just find it out yourself. You've been taken over. So here's a picture of one of my uh, videos. You see how they look alike? Look at the mouth, look at the eyes, the nose. You know, they are the same. It's the same people who rule over the US. Both of these people, their names were Huber. 
you know look at the eyebrows it's it's just, they are the same look at the nose where you know the eyes and they are the same president herbert hoover j edgar hoover and they were both in office when the wall street crash happened when they stole your money eh you understand so here's part of the title of that film uh, it's everywhere on websites and even Obama has Swiss roots from Reed Katzers, the canton of Bern. Erich Honecker, originally written with double G like Egger, as in Schwarzenegger. This criminal president and head of the Stasi from Eastern Germany, also Swiss, from the Swiss Palatines or Saarländische Schweiz. The Palatines or the uh, Palatinate, they are in the uh, the south of germany next to switzerland where trump's ancestors obama boris johnson honecker where they all came from who are a actually ethnic swiss so here you can read about the palatinate and the palatines in southern germany and also donald trump's ancestors are from the swiss palatines from a town called kalstadt in germany where the Swiss after the 30 year war massively emigrated in empty southern Germany, where from 1618 to 1648, the entire German population vanished, murdered by the notorious Swiss mercenaries under Templar command, with two thirds of the original German population dead. This time a Swiss genocide on the Germans. And when in 19 29, the Swiss Herbert Hoover, real name Huber, became US president. The Swiss, their banks, and all their Swiss US sleeper agents on all key positions, and their, all their Hubers on all key positions, with their head of the FBI, Gay Edgar Hoover, Huber. Immediately afterwards, a few months later, provoked. The American Wall Street crash on the stock exchange to be able to steal all the savings of simple and honest Americans. So, especially for this occasion, it needed a world central bank and for all the central banks in the world in order to transfer the theft of the century from the US central bank, the Federal Reserve, into Switzerland to finance Hitler's war industry with that. So, the Swiss founded the Biz, or Bank of International Settlements in Basel, right at the German border and next to the Basel railway station. <laughs> Quite practical. So, Jalmar Schacht, Hitler's banker, 33 degree Freemason, and an aristocrat, became its first bank managing director. It was Hitler's banker. Only so, the impossible and incredible rise of the German war industry and its financing can be explained right after a very bad and very long economical depression, severe economic crisis with, short f with food shortage and starvation in Germany. This is what John F. Kennedy meant in his speech against the secret pharaonic Swiss Nazi Templars in the US of April 27th in 1961, which starts as follows. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned. No rumor is printed. No secret is revealed, for we are opposed around the world by a monolith, monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. Switzerland. One million Swiss Americans on all key positions in the US. Soon after this speech, he was dead. Octogon of the Swiss Nazi Templars killed him. 
at least since 1923, Hitler visited Switzerland now and then, where the Swiss general Ulrich Wille and branch of the German high aristocracy invited him in Zurich, Switzerland, to finance him. Through Rudolf Hess, the second man in the Third Reich, who studied at the ETH Technical University of Zurich. Hess was even born in Alexandria, Egypt. We're talking about pharaohs. So here you can see Mr. Hitler in Zurich, Switzerland, with Swiss policemen and Swiss army guys like here and then here. So here on the picture, when Hitler was in Zurich in 1923, you definitely see the guy having a, uh, a gun in his pocket. And the Swiss policeman here, well, he doesn't care because they're all into it. And the Swiss of the Octagon Nazi Templars financed the Nazis on condition to murder all the Jews of Europe once and for all and to destroy Germany. Because of two main reasons, the Jews should be annihilated and disappear from the face of the earth. First, before, because they formed a patriarchal society, which the sisters of Isis and their lesbians hate most. And second, for creating a society within the society, completely isolated and out of control of the still pharaonic nobility like three million Jews in Poland without speaking Polish, just living in a big kibbutz for themselves. And Pharaoh doesn't like that, having no control and no taxes to pay. This is why the Swiss agent Adolf Hitler wrote in his book Mein Kampf that the Jews had organized the First World War through the notorious and elusive Jewish finance. A stupid Swiss lie by the Swiss bankers of Octagon because anyone can see that Europe's entire high aristocracy pushed us into that war. Here, the German Emperor William II and grandson of English Queen Victoria is all one big family. They put on a uniform and a helmet with a little obelisk on top and said, now there is war and who refuses gets shot. Here you see, Templar symbol here, Templar symbol here, Templar's cross, skull and bones of the Freemasons. Are well, you still got any doubt who the Freemasons are? Well, here you see the two pharaohs of Germany and the pharaoh of Austria together. The Emperor Franz Josef from Austria. He put on a uniform and a helmet. Now there is war. And this is why Swissy had to murder Emperor Sissy backwards for Isis in Geneva, Switzerland, just before the war, because she was an active pacifist and anti-militarist. Here in my video, Swissy killed Sissy. The uh, king of Italy, uniform helmet on, now it's war. And look at all the medals. Whoa, he must have been a brave man. Look at it. And look at it. He's saluting in a uniform. What a brave man. The Tsar of Russia and King of England, same thing. They all put on a uniform and Europe's entire nobility ordained the people of Europe to the big dying. I'm sorry, no Jews in responsible for that one. So, you see... The English king, uh, you know, they look the same. They are cousins. They look exactly the same. Oh, oh look at what a, all the octagons here. What a brave man. Look, this this battle here and a battle here. Wow, he risked his life and all that. And look at this one here. Wow, so brave. You know, they give a good example. So we follow that, eh? Yeah, you can read it with me. At the time of World War I, the King of Britain, Russia and Germany were all first cousins. When asked about World War I, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany sarcastically remarked, If my grandmother, Queen Victoria, had been alive, she would never have allowed it. This is the First World War. We died, millions of us. Eh, Mr. Hitler? Where are the Jews then? Eh, Swissy? You liars. It was, as always, the aristocracy and nobility behind all the wars and two world wars. 
And this is why Hitler always had a painting of German Emperor Frederick the Great with him, also called Fritz the Faggot by the people for his bad taste of seducing young soldiers, leaving them no other choice, really. Here you see the, uh, the office, the bureau of Mr. Hitler with a painting of um, his ancestor, there's no doubt, Frederick the Great. And Hitler was also obsessed with Pharaoh Nefertiti, well, both his ancestor, of course, as the nobility, nobility comes from Pharaoh, as Führer almost sounds like Pharaoh, Führer Pharaoh, Führer Pharao. Now look at the pin he's got on his tie, you know, the wings there, it's from Ma'at, the, um, the wings of Ma'at, it's all Pharaoh. Officially, there currently are 100,000 aristocrats in Germany alone, with millions of descendants and half-breeds in all key positions. And look at the bent necks of both of them, it's the same bloodline. They have got bent necks and, and bent bodies because of the, um, the inbreeding. And look how she's looking, you know what she's thinking, it's the same. Hello Granny! So here's another film of mine in which I explain a lot more about it. You see the obelisk and here is was uh, Hitler was sworn into the uh, chancellor. And that is why the Reichstag was set on fire. Because Hitler wanted to be sworn in for German chancellor in Potsdam. So this is in Potsdam. And seat of the Sanssouci castle, which is just around the corner. And the Sanssouci castle, and here in Potsdam, it's in front of the obelisk and the Garnison's church with the coffin of Frederick the Great, right? Fritz the Faggot. It's in it and not, he didn't want to be sworn in in the German parliament or a Reichstag more or less, which is a symbol of the German people and the idea of democracy. Well, the idea of democracy in theory only, of course. But as, the, as they're all aristocrats and nobility and pharaohs, it has to be done next to a castle so and, and next, to, next to an obelisk. It's full of obelisks there. Potsdam is the seat of the German emperors in Prussia. And um, this is why they uh, set fire to the Reichstag. There's no other reason. So every time when you see here this, the, the YouTube uh, signs here and the title like under it and here the, the YouTube make it bigger, you know, um, then you know it's uh, I, I make a, 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 a reference to one of my YouTube videos which I already made uh, on the subject. If, if I wouldn't do it like this, um, the, the whole film here would take 10 hours or 20 hours, you know. And um, so the best thing is if you see it, just pause it, write down the title and then look at the, these videos here afterwards. I say it only one time here and th there were quite a few videos already which I made a reference to uh, before. So yeah, so after financing Hitler by the Octagon of the Alps, the Swiss put all their men on all key positions and all on all leading officers of the Nazi dictatorship, like the Reichs Health Minister of the Third Reich, the SS Obergruppenführer, an SS General, the Dr. Leonardo Conti, you can see him here, with the nickname the Swiss Sadist, because he initiated the T4 or Tiergarten 4 program enabling medical experiments on humans, doing so on about half a million persons, using them as guinea pigs. And even the Germans were afraid of him, because, and he was born in Tessin, Switzerland, like the family of French Prime Minister Manuel Valls from his mother's side. So here's another of my videos on YouTube about Mengele here. So write down the title and um, um, so you can watch it afterwards. It, it's much more thorough. Uh, you have to excuse me because I don't have a home and I have no more time um, to do it all here. So the Swiss Minister of Health in the Third Reich consequently was the direct superior of the notorious camp doctor of Auschwitz, Dr. Joseph Mengele, 
who was himself an ethnic Swiss. After the war, the war protected by the Swiss authorities, Wall knew he lived in the Schwimmbadstraße No. 9 in Kloten, Zurich, practically near to the biggest airport in Switzerland for his many travels to South America. And every year, Mengele, nicknamed the Angel of Death, went skiing with his son Rolf in a Swiss holiday resort called Angel's Mountain or Engelsberg in the Hotel Engel or Angel, while son Rolf attended the world's richest and most famous boarding school for Pharaoh's elite in Montreux, Switzerland. During his Swiss years, Mengele was directly involved in the forced mass sterilization after the war in Switzerland of 40,000 gypsy women rounded up in the 50s, 60s and 70s, a thing the Nazis called the gypsy question. Was in fact Mengele's primary assignment in Auschwitz to experiment on gypsies by sterilizing them with high radiation output of X-rays before getting famous through torturous experiments on twins and small Jewish children. After the war, the police chief commissioner of Bern, Switzerland, Dr. Heinrich Rotmund, gave to all these Swiss and ethnic Swiss Nazi war criminals a Swiss Red Cross pass to go to Argentina, like Mengele, Klaus Barbie, head of the Gestapo in Lyon, France, nicknamed the Butcher of Lyon, who later on worked for the secret police of Bolivia and helped torturing Che Guevara before killing the Cuban revolutionary. Of course, Adolf Eichmann also got a Red Cross pass and with that tens of thousands of Swiss Nazi Templar war criminals furnished with documents from the motherland in the Alps for the notorious Nazi red line into never seen again. The SS Standardenführer, so SS Colonel Karl Jäger, was born in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, and he was the head of the SS Einsatzgruppen, who like a wave after the first wave of war machinery of the Wehrmacht, Army Troops and, Army troops and Luftwaffe, Air Force, simply erased the civilian population of Western Russia like a horde of machine-like serial killers. Like a real Swiss banker, Swiss Karl Jäger, he wrote all the numbers down in a to be proud of logbook, the notorious Jäger report. And his name Jäger literally meaning the hunter of how they manually liquidated 400,000 Jews in the sand, in the sand pits of which 32,000 children, all handwork. 32,000 children manually, well, only Swiss you can do that. In 1941, Switzerland officially financed Operation Barbarossa, the German offensive against Russia with 1 billion Swiss francs. 1941 value, thus financing officially the genocides against the Jews and the Russians by Switzerland. One billion in those days are at least a trillion of today's Swiss francs. Therefore, the Swiss still today call Germany the Big Canton. And on February 23rd, 1937, Adolf Hitler guarantees the neutrality of Switzerland. So this article is in WDR, which is a, a big uh, German um, a broadcast and um, official. Also, Holocaust trains from Italy to Germany passed through Switzerland and on February 23, 1937, Hitler openly and officially guaranteed the Swiss neutrality to his finances. And the link of this article you can find in this film in the description. Thankfully to their finances, the Nazis even had a Swiss cross on their tanks in the beginning of the war. And there even might have been full Swiss tank Panzer divisions, which Swissy later on managed to hide by camouflaging a Teutonic black cross on top of the Swiss cross, thus getting the military logo of the Wehrmacht German army from the big canton, and both parts of that logo derived from the Knights Templars, 
both the Swiss cross as well as the Teutonic cross. For the Nazis to invade Poland instead of Switzerland is like living next to the central bank but rob the snack bar next to it. What Nazis in fact repeated not long time ago when the German NSU Nationalsozialistischer Untergrund robbed Turkish and Muslim snack bars and killing the owners with it using of course Swiss special weapons bought and suppressed in Switzerland. Also widely known how German neo-Nazis undisturbed practice shooting in Switzerland. So instead of doing something against that all, the Swiss and their ETH Rudolf Hess school in Zurich published an official report for the German authorities in 2018 that foreigners and immigrants are responsible for all the crimes in Germany. Say what? You got it. Swissy just tries to stir up hatred and racism, just like in 1923 when Adolf, Adolf got invited in Switzerland. And it says in this article, how is it possible that a Swiss institute makes a study about crime of immigrants and uh, of a whole for Germany? Officially, how is this possible? The sly Swiss still pretend that they had to behave like they did during World War II. They were pushed like, because they were afraid of the Germans. Can you believe that? Look how they're all smiling here at the border. At the left side, the Germans, and the right side, the Swiss. They're all smiling, having a nice chat together. Here again, you can see them nicely chatting together and smiling, both of them. To the left, a German soldier, and to the right, a Swiss uh, soldier. And simultaneously they say that the victorious Swiss army could never be defeated with all their cannons in the mountains. Problem is that only 5% of the Swiss population lives there and 95% in flat or slightly hilly terrain, easily accessible for armies. And that Swiss only had 50 tanks, whereas, whereas the Jerry's 27,000 over the whole war and only 450,000 Swiss men under arms against 18 million crowds. Technically speaking, one could have left those dug in Swissy with their formidable cannons just there by themselves up the mountains. Why bother? Sometime sooner or later, they would have come down all by themselves out of hunger and nothing to do anyway. Hitler apparently once said, if I want, I can take Swissyland with the Berlin Fire Department. Then there was Hitler's mastermind for genocide and worldwide father of eugenics, the Swiss doctor Ernst Rudin, born in St. Galle, Switzerland. And just like Dr. Mengele, an ethnic Swiss, so was his military chief and com commander of Auschwitz, Rudolf Huss, another ethnic Swiss, who even spoke Swiss German in Auschwitz. Just like the commandant of the first extermination camp, Zobibor, the SS Sturmbahnführer Christian Wert, nicknamed Christian the Terrible, also an ethnic Swiss. Further ethnic Swiss were Julius Streicher, the publisher of the anti Semitic magazine Der Stürmer, the Stormtrooper, that just as the French Charlie Hebdo, depicts other people, races and religions as animals as the Swiss SVP Nazi party performs today in the streets of Switzerland. The head of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, another ethnic Swiss, and there were many, many more on all key positions of the Third Reich. So here you can see Mr. Hitler, Himmler, he's uh, standing at the Swiss border and he's smiling. I had a good film about him, but uh, Swissy managed to take it off. I can't find it anymore. I'll do it again one day. This is how the Swiss make Nazism legal. This is what Swissy taught the Germans then. And this is what's happening in Switzerland today by making persecution, racial profiling, terror on entire families, torture and murder official and legal by taking over the executive put on a police uniform, army, justice department, lawyers, you name it. And Swiss is even exporting the modus operandi 
all over Europe by means of Swiss fascist speakers knotting ties to the worldwide family of haters finding their destiny in Nazism again. And in Switzerland, this was never finished. And there are quite a few people in Switzerland with the name of uh, Himmler. So what is an ethnic Swiss? During the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648, about 100,000 Swiss mercenaries called Reisläufer and under Templar's command murdered about 20 million Germans and their children. About two thirds of the German population in those days perished in this genocide on the German people. Whole German towns disappeared from the face of the earth and Swiss mercenaries told the other Swiss back home, the land is free, you can all settle down there. In the south of Germany, in Baden-Württemberg, big parts of Bavaria, Vorarlberg in Austria, Alsace in France and northern Italy are all what is called ethnic Swiss. Those who replaced the indigenous local population of this area because of the 30 year war. And whereas being spoken now an Alemannic dialect like in Switzerland. These, in fact, are ethnic Swiss, from where most of the Nazi leaders, Nazi elite and Nazi war criminals came from. They were all ethnic Swiss or even born in Switzerland, the motherland itself. And in the still Gallo-Roman, now French Alsace, the Swiss mercenaries massacred 95% of the indigenous population. That's why the world the word Alsace etymologi etymologically from Al Suisse, all Swiss. That's the reason that Alsatians neither like the Germans nor the French because they are Swiss. So this is that French part, it's called Alsace. They're all Swiss and they speak Swiss and they think Swiss. And because of the former mentioned re reasons, these regions close to Switzerland are the richest in Germany, France, Austria and Italy. In 2014, articles were published in big European newspapers that Switzerland actually wanted to form a great Swiss empire with southern Germany, West Austria, Alsace and northern Italy to reunite all the ethnic Swiss back into the Reich. Under one roof, the empire of great Switzerland. Throughout history, this has well functioned as a buffer zone around Switzerland to better protect the motherland and central base. Uh, the Shoah, Holocaust and the Second World War have been organized and executed 100% by the Swiss. By the way, I also lost my grandfather in 1942 because of the Nazis. He was an officer in the Royal Navy, something to do with intelligence, which they call naval intelligence nowadays nowadays and not, and i'm not jewish at all so here you can see them standing together again here yeah, with the swiss cross a swiss soldier with the swiss helmet and here the uh, german soldier with their symbol there they're just chatting together you know pausing for a picture together and as the french they didn't i put i did three complaints uh, in France against the state of Switzerland, I never even got a, re a reply. So I would like to make a complaint in the US Court of Justice against the Swiss state for 50 million fold murder premeditated for the Holocaust and for planning the Second World War, plus two genocides on the German people, one during the 30 year war and one during World War II. A complaint for all the Swiss crimes against humanity and the already mentioned crimes against me and my family shown in this YouTube film, The Swiss Beast, The Devil, The Devil's Own Base. In the book of Revelation from the Bible, it says the beast had seven heads and ten horns. Well, Switzerland is the only state in the world with seven heads, whom they call the seven federal councillors who additionally share ten ministry amongst each other, the ten horns, on which they take us on, metaphysically seen. So seven is also the holy number of the pyramid, as in the square and compass.
and all nations on earth have traded with this whore of Babylon called the sisters of Isis, Suis. All nations have traded with the Swiss Templar banks, the first in the world, out of whom all the world's banks come from. Bergdorf in Switzerland is without any doubt the cradle of modern Nazism and up to the new age the center of world Nazism because in the 18th century the Duke Hartwig von Hundradowski lived there, another one of those pharaonic aristocrats and he really was a great source of inspiration for the young Hitler through his books and magazines who helped forming Hitler's attitude from a very early age on that it would be a lot better to, to eradicate all the Jews from the planet once and for all. And always it all comes out of Switzerland, even up to the terrorist attacks of Paris, Nice and Berlin in 2015 and 2016. When the Swiss fascist mafia kidnapped me in 2015 against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs because of my historical documentaries like Auschwitz made in Switzerland and other about the Swiss resp responsibility concerning the Shoah and the Second World War, Octogon held me hostage in the torture detention center of Bergdorf and also the cradle of modern fascism by the Duke Hartwig von Hund Radowski. As in the cell next to me, there was this Swiss neo-Nazi from Bergdorf itself, with a very light sentence of just a couple of months because of his committed bomb attacks with <coughs> explosives on asylum seeker centers. As there were also immigrants on the same ward with very heavy sentences of several years because of nothing at all. The Swiss neo-Nazi had tattoos over his entire body with charming slogans like six millions are not enough, making it clear to me he had read the works of the Duke from Bergdorf from his hometown. He had an enormous tattoo of a swastika over his entire face. I can still see the enormous swastika deforming under the grim expression he pulled when I said to him, now, with all those tattoos, you've turned into a colored man, mate. And as Swissies are as cold as reptilians, I couldn't really see if he valid my British sense of humor, or maybe not that much. There were also prison guards with so Nazi-style tattoos of their typical typography letter style in their necks, who always behaved in a good mood like old pals with the tattooed neo-Nazi prisoner whereas towards us immigrants and foreigners being full of Swiss hatred in this Bergdorf Nazi center prison. One should distinguish two types of Nazism, the poor man's Nazism and Nazism by the rich, which seems to be a paradox and they are in fact two totally different things. Nazism of the poor is very visible and very loud with the right hand that wants to go up all the time skinhead like a pharaoh, whereas real Germanic should in fact be long-haired. The tribu tribal Nazism show their hatred at any suitable, mostly unsuitable occasion, not really gifted with too large intelligence in the style of their supposedly superiority and mostly out of the working class and forced to live next door to those immigrants out of the category less desired neighbors. This model in fact is rather rare in Switzerland, the, the land per definition Nazism for the rich, Swiss banks and Swiss industrialists acting secretly, invisible and highly organized. And it's always Nazism for the, of the rich trying to mobilize Nazism of the poor, of course for their own cause only and never the other way around. The sort of Le Pen of the National Front in France, billionaire, lawyers, both father and daughter, and clearly visible in my videos with the Swiss flag in their hands. And they always try to mobilize the Nazism of the poor for their own interests, traditionally rather busy to enrich themselves through the cause and during a, a war hiding it all in Switzerland, their octagon base just like, in fact, the Nazis did during World War II. 
And after the war, when Nazism of the rich has filled their pockets and vaults in safe Switzerland, they let the people and Nazism of the poor fall, left in poverty, hunger and total destruction. Just as after World War II, the Crusades and the next big war coming up, the Nazis and the Swiss therefore have won the war, while the Germans lost the war. By the end of the war in 1945, in Hotel Maison Rouge, or Red House Hotel, which you can see here, at the Kleber Square in Strasbourg, France, a French secret agent of the uh, second bureau, Le Deuxième Bureau, furnished the last official witness account on the elusive octagon ever since. And remember what I told you about the pharaonic red house. But he said he didn't understand why the name octagon, octagon, yeah? I do know why and will reveal that to you here. If you draw a line around a Swiss cross or a Templar's cross, you get eight lines forming an octagon. When being an archaeologist or historian like myself, you know that the Knights Templars almost always built their temples, chapels, churches and castles in an octagonal form. And that's exactly the reason that Hitler's eagle, eagle's nest, now called Kirsteinhaus, of the Führer or leader of the Nazi Templars, was built in an octagonal form for the very same reasons. So, because of these Nazis of the elite, this is why the Swiss Nazism of the rich have sentenced the young, tattooed neo-Nazi to a very light prison sentence, because within the elapse of a very overseeable future, his questionable qualities could become effectively useful. Until that moment of glory, he will be incarcerated for a very short time, together locked in close proximity with those immigrants whom he favours so very much, so as to say increase his qualities in service of the Nazism of the rich. It is therefore because of this all that there were every time false flag terrorist attacks in France, just before some important elections and even before the 2017 presidential elections to steer the public opinion towards Le Pen for president like the terrorist attacks in Paris on Friday the 13th, 2015, and those earlier that year against Charlie Hebdo, every single time just before some political elections in France. Not even the bodies of those so-called Arabic attackers they were able to show us. On the contrary, instead of that, serious witnesses in very big English-speaking newspapers, as here in the mirror of November 14, 2015, who saw white men with blue eyes. Well, the thing with the blue eyes, actually, they took it out of the article. Uh, they were looking very muscular, Navy SEAL-like, and moved very military trained and in disciplined manners. Here it says the shooter was white. There were white, white men, like Navy SEALs. And before, it, it definitely said he had blue eyes, but they took that out. So here's some more of that witness account. You know, they're just cool after the shooting. They killed a lot of people. They look like soldiers or, milit or military, you know, mercenaries. And very muscular. Well, read it yourself. Well, this is Octogon, no doubt. There were also witness accounts in the media seeing a second group of men who just stood there with their Kalashnikovs after the attack apparently not knowing anymore what to do, mission accomplished, and nothing more in the hard disk. And exactly like this it was. There were two groups of men. One group of military drilled men from Octagon, who had put the second group in place. The second group consisted of brainwashed Arab pity criminals, and when the program by the CIA MKUltra had ended, they just stood there without knowing what to do next, nor how they got there. It was so in Paris and even more obvious in Nice on July 14, 2016, when the Arab lorry driver was just senselessly sitting in the driver's cabin 
when the surrounded police just executed the absent spirited man in order to do away all possible evidence in spite of the obvious fact that the terrorist caught alive would be worth a, a substantial lot more i was in nice that day and saw a huge police exercise with at least 20 huge police vans before the attack and this practice has been witnessed just before all the terrorist attacks we had since 9-11. So the authorities in all tranquility can prepare the attack. How does it work such a brainwash and how did they do it? It started in 1951 when the Swiss poisoned the entire French town of Pont Saint-Esprit with LSD in the flour for the local bakeries to convince the CIA that LSD is a good thing to use for the MK Ultra a monarch brain control program. Because exactly during this time, the Cold War had started and it needed a valid product to extract intel out of a KGB agent. The Swiss and the biggest chemical plants in the world, now Novartis, the biggest chemical company in the world, had invested a lot of time and money to develop their product called LSD by Albert Hoffman just a few years before in 1949 and couldn't find a market for it. The inhabitants of Le Pont Saint-Esprit went entirely bunkers, like an end-time scenario transcended from the heavens. An, an 11-year-old strangled his grandmother, people thought being an airplane and jumped down from the third floor. Others saw snakes crawling out of their bellies. Hundreds ended their days in the boogie house. And many died. Nice sample, said the CIA, their Swiss director Alan Dulles and Swiss US President Eisenhower. We buy it. Yes, there are currently more than one million Swiss Americans who totally undermined the USA. The Arab terrorists from Paris and Nice were all, and each one of them, small criminals, who in the night were extracted out of their cells in prison so their fellow inmates didn't notice a thing. Then they were tied up upon a special stretcher in a clinic, Swiss LSD administered and heavily tortured. That hurts like hell and you want to run away, but you can't because hands, feet, legs and body are strapped to the stretcher. So you run there where you still can in your head. One literally turns crazy for pain and a breach is open, a barrier su surpassed through which the consciousness slips through into a new world where you've never been before. A new personality and a new identity gets created like in a schizophrenia. Through the terrible pains, the old personality gets blocked out because it's too painful to be there. Consequently, like a new blank page or empty memory SD card, one can fill in the new program, whatever you want. Then the subject gets a video headset on, which shows for weeks a bearded Muslim in Paris who empties his Kalashnikov. When finished with the subject, he only knows to do that, what's in the new memory card. And when he's finished and mission accomplished, he will be just standing there like a zombie because there's nothing more in the hard disk. Then some spec op guys come to transform the defenseless subject into a Swiss cheese with a heavy lead poisoning. So for not hitting their side, in Paris only left-wing objectives were targeted. Charlie Hebdo, a Bataclan rock concert for youngsters with long hair smoking weed, target the people in a soccer stadium, in Nice, children and 50% um, of the people mowed down were Arabs and some families on a Christmas market in Berlin. No objective of the right or the elite was hit. Neither the authorities nor the McDonald's where the attackers ran past. Clearly octagon of the Nazi Templars of the Alps behind the attacks doing which we call in the army slang soft targets, a real speciality of the Swiss always taking soft targets like my family. Always in recent history, all the attacks of which left wing was accused 
were in the end done by right-wing groups. It's a tradition that continues. The Munich bombing of 1980 and 13 dead. First, the RAF, a German left-wing Baden-Meinhof terrorist accused, in reality, a German neo-Nazi group ordered by Gladio, who did it. And Gladio is a octagon branch. Bologna, Italy, also 1980 and 85 dead. Not Brigato Rosa, but also by Gladio. And in Belgium in the 80s, with 85 dead, not Action Direct, left-wingers, but again Gladio of the Swiss Octogon. I know that Octogon are behind it, because I was there, when America's and Europe's future were discussed by Octogon and the Swiss industrials. And I am willing to give names, but I need some kind of protection. From all the unknown information presented here, logically one has to draw the conclusion that one cannot just know all this without having been initiated in at all. This is why I spent five and a half years in Swiss prisons as a political prisoner, because I express myself about things the Swiss laws of silence do not allow to be spoken of. The Swiss police and judiciary are in fact a terrorist organization for Octogon, who kidnap people against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs only because I express myself about things they don't want to hear. In Switzerland, giving one's opinion is a capital crime worth torture and persecution. And in this land, in the Alps, they foster a very long tradition of hatred, racism, anti-Semitism, etc. against everyone who is not Swiss and does not comply with the accustomed model. So, at the very same moment when the Duke Hartwig von Hundradowski from Bergdorf, Switzerland, and base of hardcore Nazism, published his anti Semitic thesis into the 18th century and later read by Hitler and the rest of the Nazis, the Swiss state officially ordered new Jew laws in 1776, the same year as the US independence and birth of the Illuminati that the combined jury of Switzerland could only live in the confined ghettos of Endingen and Lengnau, in the north of Switzerland, near the German border, in the hope that they would all disappear into Germany, which they finally did, because a few years later there wasn't a single Jew left in Switzerland. Switzerland was Judenfrei. They had all left Switzerland and chased away by Swissy. Same thing, the Swiss with their terror towards others have done with me now. And it goes on this thousand year Swiss tradition against everything what's different, with Muslims as today's Jews, the anti-Islam concentration camps ready for use. Already in the Middle Ages in Switzerland, the Swiss state had already forced the Jews to always have a yellow circle sewn in onto the jacket together worn with the so-called Jew hat, a long yellow hat and prefixed form, almost like the typical sorcerer's hat. Therefore, it didn't really come by surprise that the Swiss state already before the war forced all the Jews to have a J stamp in their passports, a big capital letter J for a Jude in it, in order to categorize them like cattle, plus the mandatory name David in front of their actual names for men and Sarah for women, all in the same pass and identity cards, which the Nazis in Germany thought a splendid idea, thus coming up with the yellow star. And in fact, Solomon's seal, a Jewish king of Pharaoh's descent, also called David's star, who, was, who also was a king. So that's the star of David or Solomon's seal. It's a pharaonic symbol. It has nothing to do with the Jews, actually, which the Orthodox Jews uh, will agree with me. They know it too. Yes, in Switzerland, all that's not forbidden is compulsory. Even the slave ships going to the Americas belong to the Swiss. Watch this film here. The KKK Ku Klux Klan was founded by the Swiss and has a logo of a white cross on a red underground, the flag of Switzerland.
and officially the KKK is the official slogan of the Swiss Parliament for consensus, compromise, concordance, all written with a K in German, meaning we in Switzerland don't make any compromises, no consensuses and no concordances. The Lockerbie bombing was orchestrated by the Swiss and their Mabo company of Zurich. See this film. And the terrorist attack of Tunisia in 2015 were provoked by the Swiss fascist police of Zurich. The proofs of all that are in my English videos about that. Octogon's Swiss grey eminence François Genoux was a personal friend of Adolf Hitler. And of Amin al Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, the uncle of Yasser Arafat, the PLO leader, and leader of two Muslim SS division. He was a general in the, in the Nazi army. And they were the largest, largest SS divisions in the Third Reich, who, with the help of Hitler and the Swiss, waged a real jihad in the Balkans, in Europe, against Serbs, Jews, and Gypsies murdering about 400,000 men, women and children. Most of all in the terrible camp of Jasenovac, where the river next to it turned literally red because of the spilled blood in it, the blood of jihad in Europe enabled by the Nazi Templars, who had an, an alliance with Salahedin, remember? An alliance with Saladin. Talking about death camps, the Swiss had even death camps in the US, murdering and torturing many Americans just 200 years ago, done so by Swiss captain Heinrich Wertz, who changed his name into Henry and who was a doctor, just like the Swiss sadist and Swiss Nazi minister of health in the Third Reich. After the war, the Swiss Genou found a lawyer for Klaus Barbie the butcher of Lyon, who was even taken into the US with the paperclip um, operation. And he found a lawyer for Adolf Eichmann and many other Nazi war criminals. Together with one of Octogon's other grey eminences, Hans Huber Ahmed al Swissri, they founded the Swiss bank Al Taqwa to better finance the Islamo fascism with which they'd infected Islam with Mein Kampf propaganda and to finance the left-wing terrorism of the 60s and 70s, who on top of that were trained by the East German Stasi, led for 30 years by the ethnic Swiss Erich Honecker from the Swiss Palatines in southern Germany, and in fact far from eastern Germany. Here we can also see how left-wing terrorism of young misled people and right-wing neo-Nazism all emerge into one single thing when one follows the river back to its source, Switzerland, Swaziland, and the Octagon Templars. And when we follow River Nile even further, well, you got it. In 2001, the other great eminence of Octagon Switzerland, Hans Huber Ahmed al Swissri forced himself twice in our house, which was only a few kilometers away from where he lived himself. He came to threaten us that I should better ride against the Jews and Christoph Meili than against Switzerland. If not, I would never see my son Myron anymore, who just got kidnapped by the Swiss. I refused and I never saw my beloved child again. Seventeen years have passed now and I don't even know if he's still alive or not. The first time the Grey Eminists came, they were five, and the second time six, and the sixth was an Arab. All that because of an article in the Basel newspaper that I published in 1999. I already knew beforehand that any complaint like the three previous ones in France wouldn't bring anything, because through the worldwide masonry web, the Swiss octagon, has all power. Freemasons getting their orders from Octogon's Templars in the Alps. Around this evil base, downright laws of silence and a wall of secrecy have been put up, which will be always protected by the international media and all the world's army. Yes, 
even so in a world army. The Swiss are organized criminals who have a country, this fake it qui protest, who profits from the terrorist attacks in Berlin, Paris, Nice, Madrid or London? Answer, Switzerland, because it destabilizes the, by the Swiss hated European community, makes immigrants and Muslims to scapegoats, will lock down Switzerland's border and end free passage in Europe, all in the interest of a land ruled by the far right Nazi Templars. Swissy is everywhere on all key positions. Foreign Minister in England, in the US the Defence Minister getting welfare money from the motherland. And how can you lose one million men during the Battle of Verdun in just a few months time? Didn't the generals attend officer's school? Well, Pharaoh's aristocratic octagon sent all the men, both French and German, to some hills in a huge forest area where all cannons, both French and German, were adjusted, adjusted to, to shoot them to pieces. Because humanity is a farmed race and the Anunnaki, in fact, Pharaoh's aristocracy. I hope that one day the world will wake up and recognize that Switzerland incarnates evil, the base of the devil.